very good morning and nice to be joining you on the form as we gear up for a busy weekend Saturday and Sunday races uh, in the northern region for Auckland Thoroughbred Racing and of course our big day coming up with the two group ones uh, on Sunday out of Alice the Sistema Stakes, Stakes, the Bone Crusher uh, New Zealand Stakes and of course the Barford and Thompson Auckland Cup. We're going to catch up with some uh, key jockeys around both meetings. First of all we'll catch up with Sam Weatherly here on the form then we'll hear from Craig Grills about his key rides around Sunday at Ellerslie and then we'll link in with Matt Kemp. Well, it's time to welcome in Sam Weatherly now as we gear up for what is a busy weekend uh, for Auckland Thoroughbred Racing out of counties and of course Ellerslie on Sunday. We're joined by Sam Weatherly to go through his book of rides at both race meetings. Sam and overall Sam looking at your book you must be pretty happy with what's coming up over the weekend. Yeah for sure BP. Um, I've got a Got a little bit of a quiet day on on Saturday, but then um, built up into a big day Sunday, and, and really looking forward to that. So um, we've had a quiet week this week. Been away to the beach actually, and had a had a couple of days off. So feeling refreshed and, and ready to go. Nice one. All right, we'll talk about the Group One racing shortly. We'll quickly buzz through those rides on Saturday that you do have out of counties, and the first of them uh, is Follow Your Dreams, who lines up in race number two. And, a good opportunity here for him, I thought, in this race, Sam, with what we've seen from him in his last couple of starts where he's been beaten behind Bonnie Lass and on the bubbles, beaten in a, a stakes race in the Mufasa Stakes. So he has to do it from a wide barrier draw, but, you know, he's, he's a talented three-year-old and, and gets a good opportunity here. Yep, definitely good. Definitely good enough. Um, he's His run first up had plenty of merit. He just came to the end of it. And last start probably... Um, he didn't really have everything go his own way. He got, got over racing a bit mid-race and then um, sort of copped a bit of a bump halfway down. So um, he should should take a fair bit of uh, natural improvement from those those first two runs. But I think if he's going to do something, he's going to have to step up and, and do it on, on Saturday because he's he's definitely um, capable um, and it'll be good if he could, can show, show everyone what he can do. Yeah, without a doubt, lining up his two-year-old form, he would be right amongst this race. So let's move on to the next uh, ride, Sam, in race number four. Hard nose you ride here in this race. A horse who was placed uh, fresh up to the races when last presented when finishing into third position. Did bring a very good trial reference too, heading into that, of course, was beaten by Sicilian Dream, who's then come out and won last Thursday and has a good barrier draw and, and second up on Saturday. Yep, for sure. Um, very, very tough run. Uh, the other day, sort of out, out three wide, no covering, and look look to be um, really attacking the line late after a tough run. So not many horses do that, and um, did have the trial form. Obviously, with Jamie's horse winning the other day, makes it makes it look look pretty good. So hopefully, um, it's taken a bit of improvement from that run, and and hopefully we can just get a little bit of a softer run. And um, looks like it should be pretty hard to beat. Yeah, gee, off the back of that run and, and the trial form, he, he does look to be a nice ride for you in race number four. We'll move on to Levita Vishvi now, who lines up in, in race number seven. This one for Nigel Tiley. And look, a horse, Sam, that does have some, some runs on the board from a previous preparation. We see this horse uh, fresh up on Saturday. Yep, for sure. And this is a horse I've actually always had my, my eye on for a wee while. She's always gone um, really, really nice races and been, been thereabouts um, fresh up. Got a big weight. Got to carry 60 kilos. Um, might might need the run, but look, trained on her home track. Nigel will have her ready enough from a nice soft gate. Um, could be a really nice place chance, but maybe look into her next start where she could be winning. All right, and then the last ride there on Saturday is a, a three or filly by Regis having its first start to the races by the name of Wonderstruck. What have you made of her most recent trials, Sam, where she was beaten uh, a length and a half back on the 14th of February trials? Yep, I, I don't mind her at all. Uh, she's a really, really big filly. Um, Miles going to be no, no worries whatsoever. She might need the run. and um, But I think she's got a nice gait as well. So... Um, Yep, look look at her once she gets up over 2,000 metres, I think, but she won't run a bad race. Best ride on Saturday? What have you got? Ooh, probably hard nose, just brings brings in the, the good trial form and run very well after a tough run last start. So uh, he should be hard to beat with a, with a nice enough run. All right, let's have a look at Ellerslie now, Sam, and we move to race number one. 
Well, we do have a, a good ride here in Irish Girl, a, a horse who's got the barrier draw. Really strong runs of, of late coming into this preparation. Of course, you've only got to go back to last weekend when finishing second in behind Pre de Fur. She comes back to 54 kilograms after that defeat behind Pre de Fur with 55 euro aboard. And I, I'm guessing that she, she rates as a, as a good, strong chance with her barrier speed, her good barrier draw. Uh, look, things can pan out nicely here for you. Yep, for sure. As, as, um, as long as she sort of handles the, the back up, which I'm I'm sure she will. She's a nice, nice big, um, quiet sort of mare, and it was a good run the other day. She was sort of beaten, beaten early in the straight, but really fought back hard. And and one thing you look at it, she's gone up against um, Tell All again here, and and they meet on on level weights this time. The other day she sort of had to give him a give him a kilo, and and she has beaten them home. So um, yeah, I think she's got to be a got to be a good ride. She's got a nice draw. She's got plenty of early speed. She could probably lead them up easily if she wanted to. But yeah, I like the fact that she's getting back on level weights with, with uh, Tell All. He sort of had to give her. A, uh, she had to give him a kilo the other day, so um, we'll have to look into that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's going to going to pave the way possibly for you in that first race here with Irish Girl. That that uh, both those runners on the 54 kilograms. Let's move to Taffy Dora now, uh, Sam, who lines up in, in race number two. She's a four-year-old mare by Tavistock. Uh, you were aboard last time and, and only just went under and behind. You know, a horse who's you know going in the right vein of form. Who's what, put three on on the bounce in, in St. Ellis. Yeah, I, I really like this little little filly. Um, she tries so so very hard and. We couldn't believe the price she was going around it um, last time. I know it was a very, very strong field, but she went around at nearly 70, 70 bucks. And um, yeah, nearly got it done. Look, um, I think, to be fair, I can speak for um, myself and Margaret here. We would have we would have liked to go another mile, I think, with her. She's She's got a touch of um, brilliance about her, but there was um, she was nominated for that Phillies and Mears set weights and penalties, but she was just poorly off at the... At the weights, you know, she was only um, going to be ha have two kilos off Shaw Roses and and horses like that. So, whereas she gets in this race and she's going to carry about 55, 55 and a half, and she will stay, um, but probably just a little bit of a question mark up to 2100. But she goes to sleep in her races, and um, yeah, I think she should be pretty hard to beat really on on Sunday off, off what she done last start. Mm, all right, nice ride in the 74-21. Let's move on to race number three now, Sam. This is the 65 over 2,100 metres. You take the ride here on Pepperello. Uh, a horse had been unlucky a couple of times and then uh, last time to the races was just beaten uh, back at Counties on the 20, uh, the 23rd of February. A uh, horse is drawn out. Uh, how do you read her chances? Yeah, look, um, I don't know a whole lot about, about the horse, but I seen last start, um, I was actually in the race and... Uh, run run second in, in quite a nice little 65 field so um, has been mixing form a little bit of late but then again hasn't added the whole the rubber the green in, in every start and gets down I think it's going to carry about 55 kilos something like that so it's a nice winnable weight um, she just goes forward and tries to take um, luck out of the equation but if she can repeat what she done last start uh, she's got to be competitive well, let's move on to your Group 1 ride, uh, and the first of them is in the Sistema Stakes for the two-year-olds, and a good ride here, Sam, in the Alabama Gold coming up, a horse that you were able to win on last time to the races when he took out uh, the slipper at Mudder Mudder, and, and boy, it was an emphatic victory with uh, foot on the pedal, and gee, didn't he just keep on running the son of Tumi loose? Yep, for sure. I, I like him a lot, Brendan. He's... he's um a really nice two-year-old type. He's he's fast. He's a very fast horse, and there's not a lot of a lot of them around. And um, he's got a, a very high cruising speed. And it, and you don't actually realise you are going that fast when you're out there. He doesn't doesn't feel like you're going going very quick. And then you look back and there's six links to your next horse. And you're like, oh my gosh! But um, no, it was good. He kept up a very strong gallop the other day. I know it's a strong field on on Saturday. Obviously, TRK horses would be very very hard to beat. And I have a lot of respect. For them, but um, a race that doesn't look to be a whole lot of speed in the race, he looks like the leader and um, look very hopeful that he can do the same thing that he done at Matter Matter a couple of weeks ago and, and run them into the deck because that's where he'll be. He'll be out in front and um, it's sort of the only way to really, really ride him, you know, just let him roll along and, and use, his, use his speed. Hopefully, I'm not that far in front, but 
Um, yeah, very hopeful that he can run a nice race. He's got Ellerslie experience as well, Sam. Look, his crack a million run was, you know, one of the better runs for horses that were unplaced with his barrier draw, with how that race panned out for him from barrier 14. He still finished eighth and he was he was very good. And of course, he has been placed here. So they're all little factors that you need as well going into the race to try and uh, mould yourself into a victory. So he's, he's got a few things in his corner. Yeah, exactly. Look, he's been there twice. He run, run second and got beaten by Fellini and he was very courageous that day. And obviously, Fellini came out and run third in the Craker Millions. And, and I think he ran about seventh or eighth there in the Millions and, and got back and had, had a... Um, little bit of an, an awkward sort of a run and his sectionals were still really good and um, drawn a soft gate as well on, on Saturday which he hasn't done before, he's always had to work every every start and he's um, it would be good if we could just sort of land there and not have to do too much and then he can roll along at his own speed but um, no, I'm definitely excited to be on him Let's move on to race number seven now. Samuel Liam Spell is the horse you ride here in this race. Uh, a runner you've uh, been on uh, a couple of starts ago. I'm sure watching the tapes you would have seen with the, the horse that didn't get the favours it was looking for last time to the races. She's drawn in barrier number one. This one for Karen Thurston. Yeah, I, I feel sorry for for Karen and, and, and the owners. There. She just said no, no luck whatsoever. Just um, in, her, in her last few runs anyway, sort of when I run, run fourth at Tirapa on her, she... She copped a massive bump out of the gates and clipped the heel, and we're actually lucky to stay up. And she still run home and run a strong fourth. And then last time, yep, she just didn't jump away that well and got got back in an awkward sort of a run race and um, really had to come come out. But closed closed off well. So first time she's actually really drawn a gate for a wee while. And if she can just jump away and get a nice soft run, she's got to be competitive. And she's got blinkers on as well, which which should help. Let's move on to another one of your Group 1 rides now, Sam, and it is in race number eight, the Bone Crusher New Zealand Stakes. And here you're riding a horse that has been placed at the Group 1 in his last two starts. Of course, you go back to Boxing Day, uh, when placed in the Zabil Classic, and then was placed into second position last time out in the Herbie Dyke behind Coventina Bay. He has a barrier draw. He's a horse who can sit uh, on speed. He looks to be a real strong chance once again, Sam. He's got the, 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 the stats here, as I said, with the placing here at the Group 1 level. Uh, bonafide weight for age, Group 1 horse. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, he's in career best form. When you look, he's probably, well, last start, he's three quarters of a length away. And the start before, he's just over a length away. So he's not, not too far away from being a um, multiple Group 1 winner. So, um, no, he's going well. A nice soft draw will, will, will really help. And, he can put himself on on speed. Um, probably won't get it as easy as what we got it the other day. There's a fair bit of speed with the mitigator, field of gold, and Tiptronic. So whether we just trail up and give him a nice soft run, I, I'll talk to talk to Marshy closer to the time. But um, he's gone so so very well, and, and it'd be really great to see him win a win a Group One wait for age race. He really deserves it. I think he's had three or four seconds in Group One, so he's been knocking on the door. Yeah, and you speak about that speed, Sam, and, and it, you're pretty happy if there is to be those attackers, and we know that the mitigator does, you know, he does like to find that position of, of up in front. Uh, you've got the draw at least to be able to assess that situation, and if you if you need to take a sit, yeah, you're more than comfortable of doing so. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll speak to um, Marshy on, on Sunday. Um, the mitigator likes to lead. I know he was a bit slow away last time and didn't get there, but I don't want to be in a speed battle and and uh, cutting throats up front, so I'd rather just hand up and get a nice, nice soft run if we have to, and it'd probably suit him better getting a, having a nice trail. And I just have to assess what I've got around me because Field of Gold will be there, and and also Tiptronic. So there's a couple of horses there that'll be um, worth following, and that'll take me a long way into the race. So um, yeah, really like the way it should. Well, on paper, what it looks like it's going to plan out. So mm. hopefully it does on race day. <laughs> Let's move on to race number nine. You've got a ride in the Auckland Cup, Sam. Uh, a pickup ride here on Hino Apelia, which has come through uh, not too long ago. And, and, of course, a horse that ran fourth in a key lead-up race uh, in the Avondale Cup. Yep, for sure. Uh, I had my first ride on him in the Wellington Cup, and he was very, very brave. He, he ran a, he's only just got beat, and I actually thought it was going to be the winner at the 100, and uh, just got war, worn down late by... Um, the two marsh runners so he's definitely proven at the distance and it was a good run the other day and he's an out star and he needs firm ground as well and we're going to get that on sunday 
um, he'll roll along in front and he's he's sort of the horse that likes to always likes to go a little bit quicker rather than um, half a second slower so and that sort of helps when you're on horses like that because it it doesn't leave yourself open to um, mid-race moves especially in those races so if we can roll along at a nice genuine speed and and increase the tempo at the 800 he'll be there to the bitter end um, probably lacks a little bit of class that, that some of those top horses have but one thing about him he'll stay 30 to 100 meters and he'll, he'll tough it out the whole way and your last ride, Sam, uh, is for your dad, and it is uh, Champagne Princess. Uh, of course, the horse that will never be forgotten for winning that very first race on the Cambridge Synthetic. Uh, y your thoughts around her chances? Yep, she's going, going really well. She's got an awkward draw in a tough race. Um, probably look to just go back and ride for a bit of luck. It, she'll, she'll run well, but she um, she goes really well second up. She had a bit of a uh, she went out for a bit of a spell after her last run and come back and she's looking well she's been working well um but her second up record is very strong so she'll she'll run a good race fresh up but uh watch out for her second up all right sam uh, best ride for sunday i know there's a couple of group one rides in there i'm sure you're hoping that can be uh, a winning run for you but uh, what's the one you, you believe is is the best for the day tavi dora's going well run run massive the other day 2100 might be a little bit of a question mark, but I think she's definitely good enough to, to win. She's on a winnable weight, so um, I'll put her in as my best ride. All right, good man. Thanks for your time, Sam, and all the best over the weekend. Thank you so much. Welcome back into the form and a man I'm sure who's keen to crack back into things on the weekend at Ellerslie on Sunday uh, is Craig Grills and Craig joins us now. Uh, good morning to you, Craig. Yeah, morning, BP. How are you, mate? Yeah, pretty good. Thanks, mate. And I'm sure you can't wait to get back into that uh, winning feeling again with a couple of Group 1 rides coming up uh, on Saturday and, and a good book of rides uh, for the weekend, should I say, on Sunday. Yeah, really looking forward to getting back into it. Um and no loss has been quite good having a little bit of a breather have a good freshen up so um but yeah definitely keen to get back into it on sunday all right well let's have a look at your first ride craig in race number one and it is tell all a horse that look things just didn't quite pan out for the horse last time out was it was was back and three wide but really game and defeat when finishing into third position he's, he's, a, he's a good chance for you uh coming out of the pike barn yeah um first time for me riding the horse but like, like you say it was didn't have didn't have all the rub of the green, but um, finished it off really, really strong. Um, very consistent sort of horse. Um, you know, it's never too far away, so um, really happy to, to pick up pick up the rod. Yeah, and it looks a good ride. A horse that, you know, and I know that Tony Pike have always had a, a good high opinion of, of his ability. And look, if he can run pretty close to this form, I mean, pre de Fur is a horse who's Group 1 place. He's, he's been in a number of Group 1 races this season. So, you know, he's, he's going to go pretty close there on, on Sunday, you'd imagine. Exactly, you know, he's, he's only been beaten less than a length by um, yeah, Group 1 performer, so um, a, as you say there, um, that's very good form to have around him. Let's move on to your next ride, Craig, in race number three in, in Chi and Bella. This one for Clint Isdale, and, and I'm sure you'll be hoping to try and turn around recent form lines where you know, things haven't gone his way. He's got four duck eggs in, in front of him. Yeah, probably not the most inspiring form line sort of get going into, into this race, so... Um, just hopefully we, we're just going to have to see if we can get a most economical trip as we can and hopefully we've got some gas in the in the tank for the finish and um yeah like i say hopefully we can change the form line around at least yeah. add some numbers into it anyway <laughs> that's the one that's the one yeah so the four-year-old mare by swainess in race number three you ride there uh, in gm bella the the beaver in race number four is your next ride craig and this is a horse uh, for barry beatson out, out of danny Virk and a horse that uh, we haven't seen since being out of uh, Tarapa last time out to the races. Uh, your, your thoughts around his chances? Yeah, well, um, and, and I rode the Beaver um, the start before that, I believe it was at Otaki, and it, it was it was a little bit of an ordinary run that day. And um, I know Barry was really disappointed um, with that run when he phoned me up and booked me for the ride. Um, yes, it was only yesterday um, after the fields came out. He said he was very happy with the way um, the, what, the way the horse has been working coming into this. So. Um, yeah, it's obviously going in pr pretty strong, strong special conditions race. Um, mm. But yeah, if we can get a nice trip, hopefully he can improve on what he has been doing anyway. 
Okay, well, let's move on to race seven now, Craig. You've got Sevenuski here, who's a good ride. Look, going off what the horse did on, on New Year's Day when finishing into fourth position when you were aboard, and you, it's a horse that you did win on uh, through uh, the depths of winter last uh, preparation as well. But well, it was up on top and run down by, by Malt Time, and hopefully there's a good improvement from him. Yeah, um, I really I really do like this horse. He impressed me when he won his, when he won his maiden um, at Ellerslie. Then he was he was out for a while. Yeah, and, and this was a good fresh up run. He, he, he just like he, he's a real on speed sort of horse. Um, but that day he drew, I think we drew pretty wide, and it just probably had to do a little bit more work than we would have liked to. And it's, especially being fresh up, it might have just told the last little bit. But um, you know, with that run under his belt, albeit it was a little while ago, but um, he has had that run under his belt, and you know he's he's drawn a lot nicer gate, so he's going to be right there. And um, I've, I've got a, got a bit of time for him, so hopefully. Um, he can, can um, do, can yeah, keep my, you know, how we, what I think of him, keep it going. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you said, he's a speed runner and he's a horse that's going to be looking to be pressing forward to the top. So you will look out for that horse in race number seven. Craig, keen to get your thoughts here uh, on race number eight now, and of course it is Coventina Bay. Coventina Bay is the two dollar eighty favourite uh, at present with the bookmakers, and understandable too with. How she put them away in the Herbie Dyke, and look, the race panned out beautifully for you. You were able to uh, deliver a 10 out of 10 ride aboard her, and uh, it was an extra distance, all those things. It just didn't matter for her. She's a high-class mare, and she gained that Group 1 last time to the races. Yeah, you, you did right there. She is, she is a high-class race mare. Um, yeah, it's just a feeling she gave me when she accelerated um, here at this point of the race here. It's, it's um, sort of second to none, really, so... Um, Talking to Robbie during the week, and um, she trialed at Foxton uh, the other day. She had a nice, nice, um, nice trial there. He said she's come through it really well, and um, he says she's absolutely thriving. So, you know, it was a first time over, first time over a trip. Um, obviously, no issue for her there. So, uh, really looking forward to riding her again. Interesting race on the weekend, Craig, isn't it, this one? Because it, there, there is a lot more speed uh, for a weight for age race than what we normally would have. So, you, you know, you look at a race like the, the Zeville Classic, Tiptronic and, and Vernon Me, they ran the Cornella because they were the two that were up on speed and it made it hard for those back markers. Vernon Me, you were able to chase that horse down who landed in front, where this race on Sunday potentially has more horses looking to go to that forward position, which is only going to pave the way for you if there is to be that pressure up front with horses like the Mitigator and, and, and those type of horses, Field of Gold, Tiptronic. So you, you're drawn well to just sit away from that speed. Yeah, I think that's probably the, the best way to, to describe it, really, um, which is good if there is plenty of speed. So um, you definitely don't want a, a, a dawdle and sprint race. Um, so it definitely doesn't look like it is gonna, it's, it's not going to pan out that way. So, um, yeah, I think you're, you're pretty right there. If they, hopefully they do... Um, they do run along at a nice genuine speed and just from barrier two, you're just going to sort of hopefully just flop over her neck and not do too much on her early and um, just get her into the clear hopefully and hopefully she can just do what she did at um, Tarapa last start. Yeah, would be ideal. she can. She'll be, uh, she'll be pretty hard to beat. Right, Craig, we'll move on to race number nine now and it is the uh, Auckland Cup uh, and you do take the ride aboard a horse who's got, you know, very good form coming into it and that of course being Lincoln King, uh, a runner who was good enough to win the Wellington Cup for you two starts ago and gee, going off what the horse did just last weekend Craig in the Nathan's Memorial when finishing into second position, he looks right on target uh, to, to, to play a big part in this race uh, on Sunday Yeah it's right, like as you say, you know, he's, he's proven it two mile um, which is a, a big asset there's, you know, there's a lot of horses in there that you don't don't know if they're going to get the two miles, so we, we know that's no issue. And um, obviously, I, I wasn't on him last weekend, being suspended. But watching the race, I was pretty impressed with the, the way you know the way how he ran, especially over a shorter shorter trip for him. Um, it, it was all but home. So um, Steve Stephen said he's he's come through the race really well, and um, he's cherry ripe, drawn a nice gate just to hopefully get a sort of mid, mid, midfielder sort of run, and um, he'll definitely keep he'll definitely be there in the finish, grinding away. Is, is he a horse that really comes back to you nicely in running, Craig? Uh, especially in you know, over 3,200 metres, it's, that's important and you don't seem to be fighting or anything like that. He's, he's, a, he's a nice, relaxed type in the run. Yeah, especially like even in the Wellington Cup, he was. Um, my, my instructions from Steve were even, they, they said, uh, he'd be, you know, sometimes he was getting a little bit too far, far back, but Steve said even just give him a, give him a good dig out of the gates, which is what, what you wouldn't normally do over two miles, because he said, don't worry, he won't over race for you. Um, 
he's a pretty relaxed customer and, and he didn't need he, he switched off beautifully that day so um yeah he's, he's, he, he seems like the sort of horse you'd um you'd be you'd be pretty hard to get him up and pulling he's pretty relaxed so um that's that's a good attribute to have it really is, isn't it, to be able to see uh, the ultimate test of 3,200 metres. And, Craig, we'll get to your last ride uh, in race number 10, mm. and you take the ride here for Stephen Marsh uh, in GC. Now, this is a horse that has always, I know, been touted for a horse that can get through the grades rapidly, uh, and he's a, he's a runner that comes into this with, a, look, things not quite going his way in here in behind St. Alice when finishing uh, into sixth position. Uh, is a horse that does come back to the 1,400 metres on the weekend, but a good way to round out your, your rides on Sunday. Yeah, I think so. He's he's another very consistent type. Um, this bloke, um, and even the start before this, it was a nice nice second. Um, you know, he was very close there. And like you say, I think back to the um, I think back to the fourteen hundred is is um, ideal. Drawing a nice gate to hopefully just get a soft run and um, yeah, like you say, hopefully round off round off the day with a with a with a winner would be good. Yeah, too right. Do you think there's a, there's a winner before GC throughout the program, Craig? One that you can identify for the for the day. Um. Yeah, I, I, um, Sabinowski. I'm. I, re I really like that horse. I think second up, he's going to go a very, very bold race. But, um, but I'm definitely looking forward to riding um, Comtina Bay and both Lincoln King and the, and the two main races. Really looking forward to getting on them. Well, a good book of rides for your return, Craig. Uh, after uh, a little break and, and a chance for you to freshen up as well, uh, go well on Sunday, and we, and we look forward to seeing how Coventina Bay can back up from her Herbie Dyke uh, victory, of course, at the Group One level, and also uh, Lincoln King, your Wellington Cup ride going into the Auckland Cup uh, on Saturday on Sunday. All the best, Craig. Cool. Thank you very much. Cheers. joined now by Matt Cameron here on the form to talk about his book of rides for both the Saturday and Sunday race meeting. Uh, good morning to you, Matthew. Looks, uh, gee, fine weather where you are. Yeah, on a cheeky little holiday. Yeah, yeah, good morning, Brady. Uh, yeah, just in Raglan for a few days and um, just living it up. So, and then back to back to the real world uh, tomorrow and get back into it. Yeah, great chance to be able to freshen up over the, the last couple of days at least before getting into the racing on the weekend. Well, let's get to your first uh, ride on Saturday, Matt, and it's Savage Katie in race number one. Look, she's a daughter of Redwood that's uh, been running consistently of late, and her last start was over the 2100 when placed, and looks to be a good chance in the first race. Yeah, she's been she's been um, getting better and better and knocking at the door, so um, she deserves a winning turn, and Cody's horses are going super at the moment, so um, looking forward to seeing what she can do. Look, beaten here at last time to the races when working home, and of course SVR, the, the winner of this race, uh, went on to compete uh, in the New Zealand Derby on on uh, last weekend. So yeah, every time she's gone to the races, as you said, she keeps improving. Yeah, she did. You know, she uh, muddled up the start that day and just kind of crossed herself. I think a few lengths, and I think the the first and second horse kind of got away on her. So if she can get out of those barriers a bit better this time, I think she even be a bit closer. Hopefully, she can um, get the job done. All right, let's move on to race number two now, Matt. You've got Quick and Away, who's second up for uh, Nigel Tiley on, on the home track, uh, presented at the moment with the bookmakers at around $13. But uh, from the right stable, to be able to say that, you know, second up, uh, he might be in a better place uh, on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, Nigel knows what he's doing. And um, home track advantage, and he normally has horses pretty fit and um, ruined to go. So um, don't know too much about it, but the, the first up run looks like it'll be a bit, bit of an improver's run. So looking forward to it. Race number three, Matt, you've got uh, a first starter here for Cody Cole, and this one is a Tavachi three-year-old filly by the name uh, of Anise. You've been uh, at the trials uh, on this run in the last couple of trials. Uh, what does she sort of, pre how does she present on, on the weekend as a chance? Yeah, I think she's a chance. Like I said before, Cody's horses are going well. He's, he's got them turning over quite nicely. You know, I think he's kind of getting the handle of all these horses. He's got quite a few on work, and, um, you know, I'm lucky enough to, to ride them at the trials a couple of times to, you know, to get a hang get the hang of them so um she's doing everything right um she get a nice enough run um she's fit she's had, like i say she had those couple of runs under about in the trials so um yeah she should be thereabouts maybe improve his run for next time race number four another first starter for you matt this one from the uh, richie murray barn a, a three-year-old gelded son uh, of turn me loose this one by the name of jack hammer does come in with the most recent placing at the trials yeah um turn me loose you know they take a little bit of time and um 
they're a little bit up and down, but you know, Sean Ritchie does a, a pretty good job. And um, I'll have to chat to Sam Willie. I think he wrote him at the trials and um, get a bit more of a line on him. But um, yeah, nice big roomy track at um, at Pukki should should help. Another one for Cody Cole in race number six. Uh, Matthew first started by the name of Astron, a, a horse you were on uh, recently at the trials. Has been a trial winner as well. Two back. Uh, your thoughts on him? Yeah, I really like this horse. Um, they've taken their time with him. Um, they haven't rushed him too much. I think Cody's dad owns him, and um, he's a horse that kind of didn't get much room at the trials. But to be fair, it's probably a blessing. He doesn't need to be burnt out at the trials. So um, if, he can, if he can relax nicely in midfield and um, let him go, he should, he should be a top chance. I really like this horse, so um, looking forward to getting on him again. Right. He, he might be one to, to follow as well post, post the weekend as well, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely, he's a big horse, and um, the more he does, the better he's going to be. So I think um, with that run under his belt, he's only going to improve with the experience as well. All right, well, let's move on to your next ride now. It's in race number seven, and it is uh, for Wayne Hillis and Balladora. Uh, she does come into this race fresh up. She's had a trial under her belt. She's a horse that put some good form together uh, last preparation for this daughter of a uh, contributor. Yeah, see, um, she's been consistent. She's, you know, been there and thereabouts, and... Um, you know, they don't have too many horses going to the races, but like I say, she's she's there, she knows what she's doing. If I can give her a nice enough run, um, you know, she'll be happy enough with how she goes. And your last ride, Matt, on Saturday is Diosa Luna. I thought this horse was a, a real good improver coming into this on, on Saturday with how the horse trialed. There were some good trials from this horse leading into the, the first up assignment and was beaten into second position on, on this occasion. Uh, she's a horse who goes from the 1,400 metres up to 1,600 metres. Yeah, she's she did a fair few things wrong when the pressure come on around that last turn and um, I think Cody will kind of sort her out and put a, change a few things around, but she's only got to improve this this run and um, I think she's a good winning chance. Do you like one on Saturday? It might be your best there, uh, Matt? Um, I think, you know, the first start at Astron, um, it gave me a really nice feel at the trials. Um, it's kind of hard to say, you know, you don't let the heads go, you don't know how much mm. is left, but the way he, way he galloped out and he was doing everything right, he's a nice big strong boy too, so um, I've always had a nice a bit of opinion of him, so um, I think he, if I can give him a nice enough run, he should be a chance, I like him the most, yeah. Okay, all right, let's move on to Sunday then, uh, Matt, now, and at Ellerslie, your first ride is in race number five, the Royal Descent Stakes, uh, and you do take the ride here on Waimoku Falls, who does come back from the 2,000 metres last time, back to the 1,600 metres, of course, a horse that you won on with that pickup ride on, on, on New Year's Day. Well, your thoughts around here with her coming back to the, the 1,600 metres, first of all? Yeah, like, it, like it, her la last couple of runs have been been good you know she's been there and thereabouts but you know I think just that last little bit she hadn't quite finished it off bit of a head scratcher but um we know she's got it there um Stevie's horses are going well and dropping back to the mile might just be what she wants but um yeah it's, she's been there about so she's fit now and ready to go so um she should she should put her hand up yeah, a good solid chance, isn't she, uh, Wamoku Falls here? And this is her uh, when last presented to the races when finishing into third position over that 2,000 metres. Keen to get your thoughts on your Group 1 ride and the sustained mistakes for the two-year-olds, Matt, because uh, her name is Lickety Split. And, boy, she impressed with what she was able to do. And it was at this venue at Ellerslie, which is always important, isn't it, for those young horses to have a sighter around Ellerslie. And she has a, a good draw on the weekend in Barry number 2. Yeah, she's a lovely filly. Um, everything, anything she does from now on is only going to get better and better. And, um, you know, she's up against a few of the, you know, they're only two odds, but the old timers when it comes to racing, they've had it, they've done a fair bit more than her. But she's very she's very settled. She does everything right. She fought the other horse off nicely. And, um, yeah, like she's got that nice draw just to posse in behind them. And, and, you know, the further she goes, the better she's going to be too. So um, lovely big stride on her. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what she can do against the big guns. Yeah, it's a, it's a great chance to be able to, to, to line her up against some of these horses. You know, you obviously got the, the, the Tiakau band, you've got Alabama Gold, who's who's been racing consistently and then blew them away last time to the races. So uh, it, it will be a big test for her on the weekend. It will be a big test. And, you know, I, I think you look at it this way with the horses she's up against on, on Sunday is um, they do a lot more right. You know, that race is a little bit messy. There was horses running off and a bit all over the place. So... The fact that they're going to be hopefully doing things a lot better she might just track into it nicely and um, just help her out a bit. But you know, whatever she, you know, what if she takes out of her first start run, she's only going to improve for, for Sunday. So I'm really excited to see what she can do. 
All right, Matt, let's move on to your next ride now. Race number seven, the 65 over 1,200 metres. Your ride here is uh, The Business, uh, another one for Cody Cole, and she's a daughter of Charm Spirit that's been uh, racing honestly as well. She's had a little freshen up since her, her last start to the races. Yeah, she's very consistent. Um, she's always there and thereabouts. She jumps, puts herself in the race, which which helps, gets rid of a bit of that bad luck. And um, like I said earlier about Cody's horses, he's got them um, turning over quite nicely. So um, it should be a runner's chance in a nice enough field. Move on to the Group 1, Bone Crusher New Zealand Stakes. You take the ride here uh, aboard the Chosen One. Uh, he is at $3 behind Coventina Bay. Of course, the horse that beat the Chosen One last time out uh, in the Herbie Dyke. I want to take you back to that Herbie Dyke race, uh, Matthew, just around his effort in that race. I mean, considering it was you know, a, a slow seven surface, he was always going to be that, that little niggle and that, that issue going into that race around track conditions. And look, he's run boldly to finish into third position. What, what was your takeaway from his run in the Herbie Dyke? Yes, yeah, probably my fault a little bit. I was a bit soft on that first corner going past the post. I just, you know, I probably just didn't get in and, and push the other horses over to the fence. But, um, and then I was just stuck out of no man's land for a little bit. And, um, you know, obviously the winner, Comitina Bay, likes that bit more sting out of the ground than what he does. And his second up record's not, not overly flash. But, um, you know, Andrew and Murray know what they're doing. And I think he'll bounce back and on, a, on a decent service. And um, I think it'll be a top chance. Obviously, we know how good he is. And, I just got to uh, sort out that first corner, <laughs> which I didn't do last time. So um, I just won't be doing that again in a hurry. So, tactically around this race would be interesting too, uh, Matthew, because we spoke to Craig Grills about it, and, and it, it, there's the likelihood of some good pressure in this race, which is going to help where, where Craig's drawn with Coventina Bay. And, and also it's going to help you with what, how, how strong he can be at the end of a race too. So if it does pan out with that, that, that likely pressure to be, to be good tempo, uh, that's all good for, for the chosen one too. Yeah, absolutely. Like I think the last two races he's been in, it's, it's a bit of a head scratcher. We we weren't actually sure who was going to lead, where the pace was going to come from, because there was bits and pieces of horses that may go the front or may not. So um, I think we've got a few in there that you know are, are certain leaders, and um, hopefully they go um, they go pretty quick. And we know the chosen one will, will stay all day, and um, we can get that bit of a roll on from the six seven hundred meters to catch up to them. He will be he'll be storming past them hopefully in the end. Yeah, it could pan out nicely for him, for sure. Let's move on to your next ride now, and we're going to go to race number nine, and, of course, it is the uh, Barford and Thompson Auckland Cup in your ride, House of Cartier. Now, she's a horse that has been a, a winner over 1,600 metres uh, this season. She's been able to run at the Group 1 level also, and now they've decided they're going to have a shot at the stumps here over the 3,200 metres. She, her last run was when she ran fifth and behind Mascarpone uh, at, at the Group 1 level down at Otaki. Your thoughts around her? Yeah, I think I think she's top top um, top horse to ride in, in this. And um, you know, Peter Didham, he's he's a, he's a good trainer with with the horses he's got. He's only got a handful of horses there. But um, he run last that was um, was huge. It was more just to clean her out and really hit the line um, just to get this run into before the two miles. But you know, I think she's run over twenty five hundred metres, solid enough um, as a three year old um, in Australia. Um, so I think it's going to be no problem. Um, you know, it's, you never know first time over two miles, but. Um, you know, she should be fit and ready to go. And um, if I can get a nice enough run, and you know, it's a bit of a horror draw, but if I can just put her to sleep somewhere and um, the races run true enough, um, hopefully we can finish off over the top of them. And we get to your last ride, Matt, for the day, and it's in race number 10, and you take the ride aboard uh, Mark Toon, this one uh, for Kylie Grass. Of course, Kylie got success uh, on uh, Derby Day. Uh, your thoughts around this runner? Yeah, the horse has kind of been there and thereabouts without really showing a hell of a lot. But like I say, it was... Good to see Kylie get a winner on um, on Derby Day, which was great. You know, obviously, you know she doesn't have a hell of a lot of horses, and I, I'm not sure if I've even ridden for her before. So um, it was good to see that one on the board for her. And um, obviously, the team seems to be um, tipping away nicely. So um, you know, it's the get out stake. So we'll be hopefully get the winner out of there. What's your best uh, for for Sunday, Matt? Um, I've spoken the chosen on the last couple of times. Um, I think I'd have to stick with him again. Um, the tried and true, and um, you know, he's a, he's a good seller and he's a, he's a good boy. And um, hopefully, we can get another great one under the belt. Yeah, sticking with the, the proven performer, right, Matt? Well, uh, a busy weekend in front of you. Uh, enjoy uh, that little bit of extra sunshine and raglan before kicking into a, a busy Saturday and Sunday. Thanks for your time, Matt. Awesome, no worries, mate. Thank you.